Ah, oh, boy. <laughs> Plop. That was fun. I, uh, many times, in many days, and I'm sure many more times in the future, find myself whipped. <laughs> Just tired, worn out, blown out. Which usually makes me more amiable and ap affable. There we go, that's the word I was looking for. Affable. But I find myself able to be entreated more when I'm tired and considerate of more things that... Dry skin. More things that God may be speaking to me than you know, I really want to deal with, like, today's devotional life. I read it earlier and said, no, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> no, not me, Lord, I don't want to do that one. That hits too close to home. <laughs> so, in a way, it hits close to home, because I know that reading it, people don't understand, but I did make a statement on one of the videos, so I probably am being busted by God to clarify. I said something once that was about you know, prayer, I just give it to God and leave it alone, you know. And there's a certain truth to praying or having an attitude of prayer that you could just trust in the Lord enough that you don't have to keep telling Him over and over again, you know, something or petitioning. But Tozer, in his devotional today, is going to discuss intercession and do it in such a way that he wants to address certain people that had spiritual pride in saying that they give it to God now and don't pray more than once. You know, Now for me, except that God show you my heart, you wouldn't know what I mean when I say things like, oh, I only pray once or you know, I don't get into this whole idea of vain repetition because I don't like to go over and over again. I like to cover it the first time. <laughs> Let's get it over with and give it to God so he can deal with it, you know. And, and to a certain degree, that's true. But then I don't explain the rest of when I'm in intercession. Like if I, if I take the time, when I was in uh, one aspect of my life, I was very much in intercessory prayer. I was involved in Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa uh, in the early days, back in the uh, men's prayer watch, in, back behind the sanctuary. And we would each night have shifts where there would be usually at least three of us, you know, maybe there were other shifts that didn't, but I don't know, it seems like there were three of us, at least the shift I was on, but what we would do is we would intercede for not just the church in general, you know, or that the world as a whole or anything like that, but the prayer requests that came in to the body of Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, we prayed for over prayed over, prayed individually, and prayed corporately, specifically for those requests that came in. And, you know, the gals in the office would, you know, obviously take whatever was on the prayer request and then kind of shorten them a little bit, you know, I mean, like, you know, Jerry, salvation, Mary, you know, healing, you know, things like that. And then what we were taught as men who stand by night in the house of the Lord that we would obviously before going there prepare our hearts for the ministry of standing in the gap for those who needed to know that there were those who were praying for them and praying with them for God to move in their life now in that type of scenario and situation then I would say of course you don't just pray once you intercede you become at one with the prayer you become connected spiritually to the person by identification in faith with that need that the person has. So the person requesting prayer, you are agreeing with in some way, so you become one with them. Then if it's for something besides themselves, if they're praying for someone else's salvation or something, or whatever maybe, then you actually become one with God, the Holy Spirit, who's interpreting what you're saying and interceding on your behalf with groans and moanings in heaven that are, you know, too unutterable to be heard, that you likewise feel within that spirit of God, that connected part of you, that somehow the words begin to flow and the, the word of knowledge comes and the word of wisdom, being able to understand what you should pray 
and how you should pray and the gifting that God is giving for that moment in prayer or conversation with the very Spirit of God as He's moving on that person's life and request. Now that, that is intercession. Now I know there's people that write all these wonderful books, you know, that in their denomination, you know, they're going to get into how they feel about it and how they get worked up about it. And I'm sure that there's some kind of spiritual gimmick to it for them. Or, you know, some of the other ones that'll be more like, you know, they'll have some denominational way of doing it and they'll have some religious aspect of you got to do it, you know, in a certain way. And then, of course, there's, you know, Jewish, you got to put on, you know, talis, you know, and talis wear, a talis katan, you know, and you got to strap on, you know, and, you know, to fill in and you have to lay it because if you don't know the difference between laying to fill in and putting on to fill in, you shouldn't be doing and you're just messing with to fill in. <laughs> or, uh, what do we call it in English? Um, let me think for a minute. Um, to fill in, what is it? Phylacteries. There we go. Phylacteries. There's the word. So, you know, you shouldn't be messing around with that stuff because the reality is, is that you're meant to come to become one with God in his desire for the person. So intercession then is being unified with God in purpose, design, and in spirit to become echad, literally, to become one with God. And so that's what intercession is. Now people like to try to combine some kind of spiritual warfare into it and go into these weird kind of mystical, magical things, you know, and Sorry, you know, I'm not going to go there. You know, if you if you really want to discuss that subject, come over to my house sometime. You know, I'll talk to you about it, you know, and we'll get into Paul and, you know, talk as a Jew to, you know, whatever you're getting to, into, and we'll find the reality of it according to Scripture. And maybe even by God, you know, visiting and speaking for himself. <laughs> Who knows? You never know with God. He could show up someday, you know, and just blow both our minds. But the point being is that in intercession, then that part, would be oneness with the unity of the Father, Son, and Spirit in joining with Him in His desire for what you're praying for to be accomplished. And so in that way, then, yes, you only pray once. Now, there are other things that people, you know, are every day they pray for their kids, like my wife, you know, my wife, you know, prays for her children, you know, that I, you know, perfectly blunt, you know, I have no idea what she prays, <laughs> which is good. Then she'll get a prayer, you know. But, <laughs> oh, boy. But I am honored by her tenacity and her pervasiveness in prayer that she does every day. Not only read the word, but she demonstrates her faith by praying for not only her family to be saved, but for other concerns, including me other concerns that she has on her heart to give them to God. And for me, you know, I, I'm a little less, unless it's with someone out loud, and I know that God changes my words to fit what they need to hear, so sometimes my prayers are more, I used to call them preaching prayers, you know, because they're kind of like out there, and people say, oh, it's a wonderful prayer, and I'm like, no, nah, you know, my prayers are like, just God do it, please, you know, get over with it, and be done with it, you know, amen. <laughs> They like what I pray, you know, so, oh, you know. God knows if you ever hear me pray and it's all spiritual, I'm not involved. <laughs> I like to keep it simple, short, sweet, to the point. But in reality, what Tozer wants to bring out is that unity that we should have in wanting to and desiring to be so filled with God that we have our request, that we have what we pray for, that we know we can give to him that which we desire for him to do, that we can't do for ourselves. So there is a part of intercession that is praying more than once, even as I humbly submit to sharing the word of God, as he reminded me that I was trying to skip it rather than share it, and how I had said that there was, you know, I just give to God don't pray a million times. There's a balance always to all that God does in many ways, in diverse ways that he chooses to operate. Spiritual pride, asking God once is enough. 
Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. Colossians 4.2 I have met Christians who insist that it is wrong to pray for the same thing twice. The reason being that if we truly believe when we pray, we have the answer the first time. Any second prayer betrays the unbelief of the first. There are three things wrong with this teaching. One is that it ignores a large body of scripture. The second is that it rarely works in practice. And third, even for the saintliest soul, and third is that if persisted in, it robs the praying man of two of his mightiest weapons in his warfare with the flesh and the devil, intercession and petition. For let it be said without qualification that the effect of intercessor is never a one prayer man, neither does the successful petitioner win his mighty resources in his first attempt. It must be noted that such a teaching will very often result in an unconscious spiritual pride. One has but to note the smug smile of superiority on the face of the one prayer Christian to sense that there is a lot of pride behind the smile. While other Christians wrestle with God in an agony of intercession, they sit back in humble pride waiting it out. They do not pray because they have already prayed. The devil has no fear of such Christians. He has already won them over and his techniques has been false logic. I don't know that I've ever heard of some of the people that Tozer is talking about because you know, even though God was bringing it to my mind to share this about the one prayer, you know, is that maybe there's somebody out there that's like one prayer kind of guy or girl, or gal. But I know that I've taken the time, for instance, like at Rosh Hashanah, you know, to Yom Kippur to pray the 10 days, you know, of the days of Allah. And at night spent, gosh, must have been four hours I don't remember if it was four hours or how many hours it was but I agonized in prayer I petitioned I cried out I laid down I I prostrated myself I prayed I sang I weeped I laid before the Lord all that I had chosen to do for this body of believers in Woodland Woodland, Woodland. yeah it's Woodland Woodland, California, that being an ancient church or ancient old church or a hundred years old that um, had been there a long time, they all had requests that irregardless of what was going on in the body and the leadership and stuff, I took it upon myself to give them the opportunity to ask for prayer, to put on specifically someone that they wanted salvation for and that we as a body would gather together in the sanctuary to pray for that and so I would change the sanctuary around for that and pray and you know put it as God had instructed me and no one ever showed <laughs> all 10 days nobody showed but my wife saw that night after night God heard my prayer because you see I had been to men's prayer watch before and I knew what it was and how challenging that could be for anyone so I did not do this in order to be seen or to be known or to be heard or to be even worried about if people participated or if alone I stood in the gap. But at that moment, the reason why I share all this is because there was that unbelievable consciousness of being outside of the physical realm of this universe and to being in touch with God in a way that you could come before his throne of grace and find mercy and in that I was blessed you know and it was magnificent time for me and I still think of it you know to this day you know some of the neat things that occurred that I don't talk about <laughs> but of those prayers I still bear in them in my mind and my heart the fact that God will answer them and meet salvation to them for those people that were committed to him for their very souls to be saved from hell. And in that I still pray, you know, whenever I think of them I consider them and lay it before the Lord. So in reality, whenever you hear someone pray only once, it might be that they are considering that when the Holy Spirit causes them and puts them in remembrance, they consider again that which they prayed. And 
there is never anything wrong in petition or intercession. It's when it's vain or repetitious that it becomes what Jesus qualified as being not necessarily needed to be done. Or in the internet, I'll give you a good example, is when people post prayers on Facebook and then tell people to spam them or to copy and paste on their profile page to be seen of people. That is sin. It's foolishness, really. It's Well, it's sin, but it's also foolishness because a child can see through that as being not real, but more self-seeking and self-gratifying to say, oh, pray for this, and they usually list what it is. That's not what Jesus said. So, in all realization of prayer and conversation with God, remember, prayer is this conversation with God. It's not just petition, and it's not just intercession, but it is interrelationship with the Almighty God Himself. And when you pray, you have the ear of not only the Father, Son, and Spirit, but all of heaven and earth is listening to.